Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. In this uh, topic, uh, I am going to discuss about ammonia detoxification. First thing, we have to know what is this ammonia. Ammonia is a compound produced during the catabolism of amino acids. Amino acids are catabolized by the release of ammo amide group in the form of ammonia and it, uh, another byproduct is alpha keto acid. Alpha keto acid can be used as a source of energy or to produce some precursors in the body like niacin. But this ammonia is very toxic to the body and it has to be excreted out of the body. That is why the normal level of ammonia is very narrow between 5 to 35 micromoles per liter. If it increases the level of this ammonia above this normal level, it, the condition is called hyperammonemia. This hyperammonemia is dangerous because one thing this ammonia increases the body pH and the free ammonia crosses the blood brain barrier and it uh, uh, inhibits the TCA cycle and decreases the production of ATP. So, overall these all things will cause uh, the damage to the brain and the uh, working of the normal working of the brain are affected. So, uh, uh, ammonia should be detoxified and it should be excreted out of the body. So, I just explained this one why ammonia is toxic and this explains one thing ammonia being uh, basic in nature, it increases the body pH. Second thing ammonia is excreted, okay. this ammonia uh, by produced by different sources, different amino acids in the body, it is converted. The, this is the major route of excretion of ammonia in the urea cycle and it is converted into urea and it is excreted out through the kidney in the urine. If you put a X mark in this arrow, the ammonia is not converted and urea accumulates in the body and this urea is taken by the alpha keto glutarate and it is converted into glutamate. The direction of this arrow, it is a reversible reaction, glutamate dehydrogenase so, the ammonia with alpha keto acid it forms glutamate. The uh, reaction is running in this direction and what it happens is it decreases the alpha keto glutarate available for the TCA cycle. So, the TCA cycle activity reduces. So, if the TCA cycle is decreased, so ATP production decreases, so it causes lot of problem to the body. So, the major uh, route is it has to go out, this ammonia has to go out so that, uh, that the alpha ketoglutate is enough available and this reaction is a reversible reaction. Uh, this everything happens normally if the level is between in this range. As I told it is uh, highly toxic, what it causes this uh, increased ammonia level causes cerebral edema tremors, slurring of speech, vomiting, blurring of vision, if not treated it causes coma and death. That is why ammonia must be detoxified in the body. So, what are the different sources of ammonia? You can get ammonia as I told major source is from the amino acid catabolism. So, most of the amino acids they put their, give their amido, uh, amide group is released as ammonia and taken up by the 
alpha ketoglutarate and converted into glutamate and glutamate can take up one more amino group to form glutamine and this glutamine is the transport form and it can uh, uh, taken up by the kidney, intestine uh, and uh, in the kidney and intestine glutamine is acted upon by glutaminase enzyme and releases the ammonia and that ammonia uh, uh, released is taken up by the liver to form to convert into urea and also the glutamate that is produced is can be acted upon by glutamate dehydrogenase in the liver and that can also give the free ammonia level. Then uh, you can also get from alanine. This alanine is the uh, uh, is the form where the most of the amino acids in the muscles by the action of transaminases they give their amide group is released from the um, amino acids and that is taken up uh, 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 by the alpha ketoglutarate and then uh, we get the finally we get that uh, amino group is present in the alanine by the alanine amino transferase enzyme and this alanine is dumped into the blood and taken up by the muscle and then in uh, taken up by the liver and then in the liver it is again uh, undergoes uh, uh, transamination reaction and then oxidative deamination to give that ammonia and that ammonia is again converted into urea in the liver. Also by the action of uh, bacteria in the intestine uh, we can get the free uh, uh, ammonia and uh, bacterial urease enzyme acts on the urea that is absorbed from the blood and uh, free uh, uh, this urea gives the free ammonia and that ammonia is absorbed by the uh, liver and then that is detoxified again. And not only from this we also get from free uh, amines that is taken in the diet and also some of the hormones or neurotransmitters like epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine all those things uh, by the action of uh, 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 amino oxidases they give the free uh, ammonia and uh, catabolism of purines and pyrimidines they also give some amount of ammonia and this, uh, these are all the different sources of ammonia they are uh, uh, taken up uh, ammonia is produced and then it has to be de detoxified because of the region explained earlier. So, the condition where ammonia level increases is called hyperammonemia. Hyper means increased, emia means blood increase ammonia level in the blood is called hyperammonemia and it is not good for the body because ammonia being basic in nature it increases the body pH and it can cross the blood brain barrier and it can decrease the TCA activity overall all this uh, this is the biochemical basis for the signs and symptoms produced by ammonia toxicity. So, what are the re reasons for this increased ammonia level in the body? One thing the major uh, detoxification method of this ammonia is through urea cycle. If there is any genetic defect or any defect in the enzymes of urea cycle in the liver that causes increases ammonia level, it causes hyperammonemia because the ammonia is not converted into urea and increase in the ammonia level or if the liver itself is damaged. So, this urea cycle will not work properly and causes the increased ammonia level. Then comes the how ammonia is detoxified. So, the major source as I told this ammonia is excreted in the form of urea majority around 86 to 90 percent is excreted in the form of urea in the liver urea cycle takes place in the liver in the mitochondria as well as cytosol and that urea is dumped into the uh, blood and excreted through the kidney into the urine. So, if you look at the structure of the urea 
it has got two amide groups nitrogens NH2 NH2 two amide groups and one carbonyl group and these two amide groups are donated by the ammonia and the aspartate during the urea cycle and CO comes from carbon dioxide. So, this what is the difference between ammonia and this I told ammonia is very very toxic, but not the urea. Urea is non toxic because if you see this is not ammonia this is amide. Amide groups does not carry any charge and it does not change the blood pH and the other important thing is this urea molecule does not require any transport across the membrane. It is sufficiently hydro non-polar or hydrophobic in nature so that it can cross the membrane and it is sufficiently polar also. So, it does not require any carrier in the blood like albumin just it can dissolve and it go into the blood and it can be excreted out of the body. That is why urea it is a beautiful molecule which is non toxic, it is sufficiently non polar, it can cross plasma membrane and sufficiently polar, it does not require any transporter. And also the urea uh, 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 ammonia can be excreted in the form of ammonium ions in the kidney it is even though it is minor one around 3 percent is excreted, but here the ammonia produced by the uh, glutaminase enzyme in the kidney from glutamine this combines with protons H plus ions and helps in the acid base balancing uh, activity. So, the second uh, route is this uh, 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 ammonia is excreted in the form of ammonium. So, not only these two, some other forms uh, like uh, creatine and uric acid that also helps in excretion of this uh, uh, ammonia through the body. So, coming to the major excretion form of ammonia that is the urea, how urea is produced in the body. I told when you look at the structure of urea, it has got two amide group NH2 CO NH2. One of the nitrogen is provided by the free ammonia that is produced from glutamine by the action of the enzyme glutaminase either in the kidney or in the intestine or from glutamate dehydrogenase by the oxidative deamination by glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme it produces free ammonia that gives one of the nitrogen of the urea and you need carbon dioxide and it requires ATP. Two ATP molecules are used in this reaction to form a compound called carbamyl phosphate. The enzyme required is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1, we call it as CPS 1 and this reaction is activated by N acetyl glutamate. N acetyl glutamate again it is, it is uh, uh, the synthesis of this N acetyl glutamate is stimulated by arginine. Whenever you take a high protein diet, that high protein diet produces this N acetyl glutamate and then it activates the urea cycle, it stimulates carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 to form carbamyl phosphate. When we always uh, you look at carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1, there should be always, uh, always you will be having carb synth carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2. So, so where you get this carbamyl synthetase 2? Carbamyl synth phosphate synthetase 2 is present in the pyrimidine metabolism. Okay. In pyrimidine metabolism, there you get carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2. Then the carbamyl phosphate combines with the ornithine to form citrulline and the reaction is catalyzed by ornithine trans carbamylase. If it, the enzyme can explain the reaction, ornithine transfers, ornithine is transferred to carbamyl phosphate to form citrulline. The enzyme is ornithine trans carbamylase uh, short form you can call OTC and then the citrulline is 
transported out of the mitochondria into the cytosol. So, these two reactions very important reactions that are taking place in the liver mitochondria. These two reactions in liver mitochondria and citrulline once formed it goes into the cytosol and that the remaining reactions are taking place in the cytosol and this ornithine that is produced as the product by product is again reutilized in the second reaction. We will see how it is produced in the next slide. Okay. Once the citrulline that is uh, produced in the mitochondria, it comes into the uh, cytosol and then this citrulline combines with aspartate. So, in the beginning I told one of the nitrogen comes from free ammonia that is from glutamine or glutamate. The second nitrogen comes from this amino acid aspartate. So, it also requires a molecule of ATP and citrulline combines with aspartate to form arginosuccinate by the enzyme arginosuccinate synthetase. Arginosuccinate synthetase combines citrulline with aspartate to form arginosuccinate. And the next reaction is breaking down of this arginosuccinate by the enzyme arginosuccinate lyase and the aspartate that entered after donating one more nitrogen is converted into fumarate, fumarate and it is released uh, as fumarate and then arginosuccinate it forms arginine and then the arginine sees the last enzyme of this urea cycle that is by the arginase is the enzyme which acts on arginine and produces the all important molecule urea and uh, ornithine is produced. The ornithine produced is goes back into mitochondria and utilized in the second reaction that is ornithine transcarbamylase uh, reaction OTC. So, the ornithine is reutilized. So, it completes the cycle and urea that is produced is excreted in the urine. So, that uh, completes the urea cycle and detoxification of the ammonia. Just to summarize uh, what I uh, discussed till now. So, the urea cycle taking place in the liver, in the mitochondria as well as the cytosol. In the mitochondria, we have two reactions and remaining reactions are taking place in the cytosol. What happens in the mitochondria? The free ammonia that combines with carbon dioxide plus ATP and it forms carbamyl phosphate by the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. Carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 and it is activated by N acetyl glutamate. The level of N acetyl glutamate increases as the protein intake increases and it is stimulated by arginine. And then carbamyl phosphate combines with the ornithine in the second reaction to form citrulline by the enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase OTC. Then citrulline comes out of the mitochondria into cytosol and uh, uh, this citrulline combines with aspartate and aspartate is the donor of second nitrogen of the urea molecule and you synthesize arginine succinate and here it utilizes one more ATP by the enzyme arginosuccinate synthetase and this arginosuccinate uh, acted upon by arginosuccinate lyase and uh, aspartate after giving that nitrogen it is converted into fumarate and you get arginine. Arginine is acted upon by the last enzyme that is the arginase to produce all important urea and that is excreted in the urine and ornithine that is produced is recycled back goes back into the mitochondria to be utilized in the second reaction and urea is uh, dumped into the blood and excreted through the urine. And fumarate that is formed is converted into malate and then malate is converted into 
oxaloacetate and oxaloacetate by transamination is converted into aspartate and that aspartate can be reutilized in the urea cycle. That completes the ammonia detoxification. I hope this lecture will help you to understand this. Thank you.